Hi everybody, this is Anna and one of my favorite dragons ever, Toothless. Today, I'm going to show you how I begin my dragon wings with, of course, my very first pair of dragon wings. So let's get started. So I've got a quick little show and tell for you. These were the very first pair of dragon wings I ever made for my daughter for her third grade Halloween. Go. Hey, let's see what's Halloween. Boom. And do they still work? Yay, they still work. Guess what? These were made out of coat hangers. Coat hanger wires, I bent them, made a little pivot point and attached a string. So, we all have to start somewhere, right? So, after that first pair, I wanted to make things more sturdy that wouldn't bend or break if they were tugged on too much. Um, I consulted with a friend of mine on materials and we came up with the idea of using aluminum tubing. This is a frame that goes in all my small wings. So it has handles, same concept as the first one. Um, so this is my five foot frame and this monster <laughs> is my 10 foot frame. So I offer both an eight and a 10 foot in the wireless motorized frames. And here, just for a quick side by side folded comparison is the eight foot and the 10 foot frame. Today I'm going to be working with my 10 foot wireless motorized frame. We're actually going to end up with about an 11 foot wingspan on Toothless and I can't wait to get started. Okay, what you'll need for the very first step is four pieces of 22 by 28 inch poster board. Okay, I'm going to connect these pieces together to make a grid and then we'll lay out the frame and get started sketching. I've got my four pieces of poster board taped together. You may be able to see, but on that end over there, there's a bit where the frame is hanging over by about six inches. That's okay, because I'm actually gonna cut a diagonal of this corner off and place it up there to cover that. And actually before I do that, I'm going to trace my frame. Now I don't have the back panel with the motor on it right now. I do know from experience in my measurements that it's eight inches wide and the frame itself overlaps with about one inch here. So now I'm putting the frame at a as close to a 90 degree angle up in this corner as possible because that's what um, the measurements are at full extension with the motor. Now if you're working with one of the manual frames, the manual frame can actually extend to about, oh, let's see, maybe between 110 and 120 degrees here. Um, so you probably want to draw your design at that full extension. It really does help to have your frame and trace it onto your uh, poster board here.
Okay, now that I've got my frame traced and a basic idea of the shape, I'm gonna go ahead and put this away and take a look at my wings. At this point, it would be a good idea to pull up your references. Okay, so I've got my reference images. In this case, I found one with a good underview of Toothless's wing, which really helps because we can see all the, the fingers on the wing. We can see the way it's spread out, what things make Toothless Toothless. Okay, so I've got my basic drawing. Um, some things to be aware of as you're sketching your full-size pattern here. Um, if you have the manual wings, you're going to want to leave a slit on one side by the elbow, by the handle, that's about five inches long and forms just a very, very slight diagonal from here to here. This is best at my baby. My baby, hi baby. Um, since I'm doing the wireless, I don't have to worry about this section. Um, what you do need to think about is how long these two arms of your frame are. And you're going to want to make sure that this section, let me move out of the way, this section of the fabric is long enough to cover these two so they don't end up poking out.